everywhere in, in practically in East Texas and Louisiana has suffered a power outage and you don't really know who your friends are and how strong you really are until you don't have power. And it's a really fun conversation. Stick with us and I'll tell you what we're really getting into besides that because it goes into the whole preparedness thing. If you don't have food, if you don't have water, if you don't have fuel, well, you've got a lot of problems and especially not having fuel. There were car lines at every Walmart we drove around where they had the Walmart gas stations that were about a mile long in Blanchard. It was crazy. And everywhere else that we went, there were insane lines and there were news reports all over in Treeport and Bossier City, Louisiana, where people were fighting in the fuel lines. And it went to solidify the whole thought and understanding that the United States is emotionally unstable. And we're emotionally unstable for a lot of reasons. But if power goes out just for a few days, and people start getting in fist fights, start beating each other up over some fuel. Wow. We, we, we got, we got some, some big, big problems. And if people are starting to have these anxiety fits over, uh, oh, God, my phone's not going to be charged. I still got Wi-Fi. I can, I can still be addicted to these dopamines. People were having withdrawals. Like, what sort of thing does that say about us as, uh, as humans? Like, oh, God, I think I'm a big, strong guy. Uh, I don't know. I think it goes a lot uh, to what we did out here is, of course, we're a sanctuary. We get together to help each other spiritually and lift each other up the best we can. And we got together as our group, a bunch of us did, and we found places around our sanctuary that were still cool, like laying on tile floors that were super freezing, <laughs> and we all got to cool off. It was fantastic. Every time we'd get hot, we'd go lay on the floor, but bigger than that, it was our perception, how we dealt with it. Instead of being whiny babies, oh, God, I hate sweating, it was... That was at the beginning. Yeah, the very first minutes. Uh, first, we're like, golly, man, we're really hot. And then we realized that and switched it to, this ain't so bad. I mean, we can figure it out. We're going to be all right. We all got each other. We all made each other laugh. Well, you know, last time that I was on here, we were talking about how everybody's sitting there on their phones and nobody can charge their damn phone unless it's on in the car or something. So you've got withdrawals from everybody just because they can't get on damn social media. Yeah, it, it's a total uh, slap in the face of how addicted every the most people are to oh, this, 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 and how frightened everybody was for not having fuel. Mm -hmm. Whenever you got guys going over and beating somebody up because they don't have enough fuel in their tank, well, that that shows that we're not prepared. Physically, we're not prepared emotionally, we're not prepared spiritually, we're not prepared for anything. And that is why everybody is always stressed out about everything all the time. People live from paycheck to paycheck. People don't know how to take any sort of emotional uh, situation. Everything is blown out of proportion, just blown way out of proportion. Everybody gets angry fast. Everybody, I say everybody, y'all know what I mean. Uh, quick tempers. Yeah. Well, what do you think we can do better to fix that? Yeah, I think people need a, they need to belong. They need to be social. You need to be, whether it is your church or synagogue, your temples, whatever it is, chess club. If you have a trusted group of friends and each of y'all steadily help each other prepare for anything. You know, we had a snowstorm several years yeah. ago. We couldn't get out of the driveway for a week. Well, if we didn't have food, we'd have been in trouble. So if you don't have the basic necessities in life to sustain you for a power outage, for a snowstorm, uh, for any natural catastrophe, 
then you have problems. You have an additional stress load that you know you can't take care of. Yeah. And then if you have all the day-to-day -day issues that all of us deal with, if we collectively come together and talk about how we deal with issues, how do we help reduce our anxiety? How do we get out of this living in a survival mode and be proactive instead of reactive? That, that is what the human condition is. I mean, we know that we need people, but, you know, everywhere you go, you're just, I hate people. I don't want to talk yeah. to people. I don't want to be around people. Well, people are a slice of you. You know, how many times I hear it everywhere I go? I don't know, that person's stupid. No, oh, that dumbass, I don't want to be around them. Well, how many times were you the dumbass? You know, I mean, we, we don't like those people because we're looking right in the mirror. And we get angry at ourselves because we see our own behavior reflected through the actions of somebody else. So, of course, we don't like them because most of us, either consciously or subconsciously, really don't like who we are. Mm -hmm. We don't like the path in life we've chosen. We don't like how uh, we perceive life's uh, beating us up. And we don't know how to pull ourselves up uh, many times. So you need a group of, of people with different experiences and a different willingness and they're able and to help each other. Yeah. And I give just handouts, but, you know, help each other up spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, to have, have a spiritual self-defense, a, a physical self-defense, have your, your ducks in order in a row. So when there are difficult times, you have you, trust, you have trusted people that, that have your back, and you got theirs. And to me, that is one of the biggest things I learned uh, that was so right in your face. Things you already know. I, don't, I can't say I've learned it. It just became more obvious than it already was. Yeah. Well, that's, that's basically what I kind of went through. I kind of took for granted everything. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to sit here and tell soft stories, but <laughs> it took for granted things that I shouldn't have, and they were there the whole time, and now everything seems like it's crashing down, but I've got everybody, and I'm fine. Right. It, it's, it's interesting how that works. I thought it was even better to have no Wi-Fi, to not have all the Wi-Fi going everywhere, because most people do not understand uh, how Wi-Fi is so harmful on a cellular level. Mm -hmm. And... If you want more information about that, just Google or DuckDuckGo uh, how harmful Wi-Fi is to the human body. You and shouldn't even have to. You shouldn't even have to even mention yeah. that. But you, it, I felt great. You know, we're out in the country yeah. anyway, so we're not. A, uh, we don't have the uh, the wave of all of that nonsense just bathing in that soup every day. But man, it was refreshing. I, I felt great when we drove into town. And it's like, man, this is nice not bathing in this soup of uh, Wi Fi. <laughs> like, you could physically tell the difference. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, one thing that, that occurred to me is because we drove past, because we're in Louisiana to East Texas, there's churches on every corner. One thing I did notice, did not notice, was on these. Uh, big superstructure churches. A lot of them have generators. Not all of them, but a lot of them. I didn't see any cars. Like I, I didn't see any offerings to the elderly people with uh, young were kids. Clothes. They were clothes. Yeah, they were clothes. But a lot of them have generators. Yeah. I was just wondering, has the condition in the United States gotten so bad that even... The churches with generators didn't open their doors to the people that really needed the AC because, you know, they're fragile and, and older. I, I found that striking, and it made me reconsider. Uh, because we made a, years ago, we made a transition from a working farm into uh, this sanctuary. And we got a big generator back here that's hooked up to, and hadn't been used in years, but it's still fine hooked up for our own farming stuff in case we lost power in this kind of situation. I was like, man, we've got this big generator back there. It's just sitting there, and we got no power. <laughs> but it's funny because now I, and I'm grateful for this because we got power again uh, for the past several hours. 
12 hours now. And uh, now I just know we can move that over to either one of this room or hook it up over to the, uh, the big sanctuary, wherever we think that would be most appropriate for whatever power goes out again. We can supply uh, that camaraderie that, hey, you don't have to be in a bad situation in town, sweating your butt off and being totally miserable. You can come out here and, yeah. and be in comfort. Or if it's like a baby or something. Like right. That. Yeah. You, you got electricity, running water. You got good friends. You, you got stuff to do. We got a full library. You can exercise your mind. We can sit around and talk. You got issues where you can help work on them. I think that's what we do in stressful yeah. moments like that. But more people should do that because like you said, we drove down the road and nobody's doing anything hardly. No, everybody was miserable. Yeah, you don't even hardly see people working on the power or whatever. No, that was something. <laughs> it was really just interesting. I just made some notes uh, about it. What I really thought was what happens if electricity, what if it would have stayed out uh, for two weeks or a month? You know, what happened? Who becomes your enemy? Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone. Because here you don't have the, like, I lived in Paraguay, I lived in another country, and in Paraguay, like, energy outage is a really common thing in the summer, especially. Yeah. And uh, whenever there's, like, a, like the really poor people that don't have AC in their house, um, not even churches, uh, supermarket. Um, the, the shopping mall, everyone offers them a place to go on and refresh, and they don't care who you are. They just care that you are a human being, and you need you are you have a problem. Hey, come on, we can we can help. I think everything in the U.S. Well, for me, looking at it from the outside, it's because people have a lot of internal wounds they don't want to uh, fix or they don't want to talk about and they just want to express them and if they don't fix that internally they will never be able to go and fix the, the neighbor your brother because you are not able of helping yourself so that's why they cannot help others that's a very good point point. and you're right uh, when you said everybody would be your enemy i think uh, just a real eye opener for people that never thought about it if you go without power for a month Everybody's ran out of food. The pretty, cute, Christian girl neighbor that you have, 25 to 35 years old, she has her one or two, three kids, and she ran out of food for her kids, that's your biggest enemy. That little cute girl that you see uh, praying outside with her kids, she's coming over to kill you for food. And if you don't believe that, then you are in absolute denial. This would turn into the most chaotic scene, and it would last for several months after that until you know most people are dead. You're going to starve to death or get killed for your food. That's just a fact. Well, that showed the first the first hours of the power outage. Mm -hmm. People were face fighting. Was just hours. That's right. Just, just hours. hours. You're hours into it, and people are already scrapping at the uh, gas stations. Yeah. If it would have been a week, the supermarkets are going to be raided. Uh, everything's going to be raided. Then. A week and a day, that's when things started to happen. Yeah, because everybody's out of everything. And they are going to be destructive. And I can promise you that cute little girl across the street, she's going to get violent real fast to take care of her little babies. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about with you earlier. Like, you know, there's 8 billion people in the world, and there's always going to be one person that's got it worse to you. But it seems like everybody in the world takes for granted what they actually have got. Oh, man, we take take it for granted on a massive scale. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, whenever I was in India, uh, there, there's massive amounts of uh, poor people on the sides of the road just enduring the elements. But they're just as everywhere I looked and everywhere I was, at least, they were happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were pleasant people. And they don't shake your hand in India. They uh, namaste. That's how they greet you, to say hello, namaste. It's very peaceful, it's very calming, and the people that will survive are the indigenous people like in the outback of Australia, uh, some true native Indians uh, 
the few hunter gatherers we have that are still around the world, those are the people that are going to thrive in a major catastrophe. Uh, they don't care about power outages just because they don't have power to begin yeah. with, and they love it. Yeah. And they're the most peaceful, non-hyper. They're just amazing. The more we have, the less useful we are. Absolutely. We have, we, like, I would think about my brothers. If energy goes up, they don't know how to, like, kill. They don't know how to, like, uh, prepare a fish, like, grab a fish from the water and prepare it, or a chicken. Yeah. It, it, is, it is amazing, especially, you know, oh, I'm a... I'm a hunter. I know how to go hunting and fishing. Well, if you're not prepared with enough fuel and you don't have enough ammo, what good are you? Yeah. Because you know how to hunt by getting in your truck and driving out to a buddy or your own hunting lease to go hunt. What are you going to do with no fuel? You, you, you're just going to take take off and take your fat ass walking down the... Uh, because you got to admit, almost everybody's a fatty in this country. Yeah. We're poisoning ourselves like crazy. It's no secret that we're 50% or more obese everywhere you look. It is, it's a shocking slap in the face that, hey, we, we need to wake up and, and be socially and personally responsible. We need to work on ourselves and start to fix ourselves and our own personal traumas so that we can help be prepared in every single situation the best as humanly possible by getting together on a regular basis, whether it's your church or whatever group. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's one of the huge benefits of coming here. So if you're local, we get together every Sunday at 1.30. And it's just been a huge benefit to my own life and and everybody that, that comes. You know, I mean, it's, and plus that we're different every Sunday. You never know who's going to be here. It just changes every time. If you're going to come every Sunday, you can come during the week. Oh, There's always sure. someone, somebody here yeah. you can talk to. You can, mm -hmm. you can show you around. She can show you around. Yeah, there's well, always somebody here. It was kind of like what you said. I feel like every single person can take accountability of how they are, and we can all come together and try to make this place better. But nobody will, it seems like they can take accountability for themselves. Except if you come here. <laughs> that is, except if you come here. Uh, because this is what this place is, and we're not making this a commercial for us. But it, if you do want to come out, you got some personal issues that you need to work through, uh, come on. But I tell you, if you don't think about major disasters and being prepared, because I hear people laughing at preppers, uh, people making fun of... Uh, Know, just having enough water and food. This is just another example of how important that is. Yeah. Well, it's when you have a few McDonald's, extra gas cans. McDonald's had a, like almost a mile of line just to get some McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's yeah like go what, poison your kids. Hurry up. It's like Cause that's the only said, option you got. Like, imagine if this had went on for a month. What would be happening right now? Well, we'd be here in, in yeah. utter peace and we'd, happiness. We'd be fine. <laughs> but uh, everybody else would be uh, kind of miserable, and that's sad to me. I don't think that's necessary. I think that is a, a state of mind that we have created and built in ourselves, and thus that has been perpetuated into the Western societies, and I think it's sad. I think that we can uh, address those issues by looking inward and preparing in every possible way. So that no one thinks about it. What if, what if there's no life? What if there's no gas? What if you don't have enough food in your in your house? Yeah, well, you you got to take those into consideration and, and do it. Uh, and it's like taking inventory of not only your home, but your internal home. Like if you're not taking inventory of yourself, uh, then you're never going to take inventory of your house. Sure. So we have to look inward in order to to ripple out. To, to help ourselves and everybody else. So with that, unless y'all got something else. Tell people to help others. Yeah. yeah. It's just, uh, it's weird that it goes out for less than 72 hours and you got people fighting in gas stations and everything. I mean, what happens if it goes on for 
24 more hours. Or a lot longer. It's, it's an interesting proposition that the uh, human mind and spirit is so fragile. So, with that, come out and see us. We're here every Sunday at 1.30. And be prepared. Be prepared mentally, spiritually, physically. Uh, your life, very moon, well, depends on. Thanks for joining us.